Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS. In this video today, I'm going to continue the Signal R loving. Uh, Signal R allows you to create this bi-directional communication between your back end and your front end. And if you're building asynchronous event-driven systems, this is incredibly powerful because it allows you to use patterns like a storage first API. Video link up here somewhere for that. And you can then use your storage first API to receive the requests. And once the processing is finished, you can stream that back to your front end using the power of SignalR and that bi-directional communication. In my last video, we looked at deploying SignalR using Fargate, so you can run SignalR in a completely serverless way to perform translations. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a completely generic event stream. So you can hook SignalR up to an Amazon EventBridge event bus and use that to create a constant stream of events coming back to your front end that you can then choose to do with what you want in your front end. Let's get into it. If you like this channel, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscribe. So if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell, it would mean so much to me. Thank you very much. Let's first start with exactly how this is going to work. So the same application that you looked at last time that does the translation now has a separate endpoint for events. This is just demonstrating the stream of events coming back over the SignalR connection. And I've got the SignalR connection already created. We've got the URL there and that's all connected up. The other thing I've got to demonstrate this is a really simple step function workflow. And this is to kind of demonstrate the flow that a order might go through in that an order gets created, the payment gets processed, and then the order gets dispatched. These are three very distinct events. And let's actually now go off and execute this workflow. The input to this workflow can be anything that you want. And this workflow is now running. You can see that there. We're at the first wait state. If I come back to my browser window now and to my event stream, you can see that these events are starting to flow back to my front end. The order created came, the payment processed, and our delivery drivers are incredibly, incredibly fast. So in 10 seconds, they can roll out that order and get it dispatched. And that's all come back with the specific order number. That's part of the entire event body. So now we've got this stream hooked up. We can get all these events coming back to the front end and we can do with them in the front end exactly what we want. So let's have a look at the application code now in Rider and see exactly how that works. Okay, so here you are back in your IDE now. And let's have a look how, how this actually background service running in .NET that's called an event stream worker. And this event stream worker is going to pull messages off an SQS queue. I'll come back to how things get to that queue in just a moment. And then it's going to iterate over these messages one by one. And it's going to deserialize the contents of this message body to this event data object. Now, if you're familiar with Amazon EventBridge, you'll notice that the source detail type and detail are actually properties on an event bridge event. So what we're doing is just DC realizing that big that request payload from SQS into something that comes from EventBridge. And I'll show you how to hook that up in just a moment. So you've got the message that comes off your queue. You've DC realized that to event data. And actually all I'm doing right now is sending the entire contents of that event data down my signal R connections. And currently I'm sending this to all of my clients. So every single connected device is going to receive this source, this detail type and this detail. If you were building something like a chat room, for example, this might be something that you want to do. Just any event that happens in your back end, distribute that to all of your connected clients. The actual messages that get to your SQS queue are defined using Amazon EventBridge rules. So against this central event bus in the same GitHub repository, there's some Terraform code to actually deploy all of this base infrastructure. We'll go and have a look at that in a moment, or you're free to go and look at it yourself. You're all grown up adult developers. So this central event bus has a simple rule defined on it. And this rule is simply just going to say, give me everything. I want to see 
every single event in this event bus. And you can do that by filtering on the source property where this event has come from. And I want all sources that have a prefix of an empty string. And that will give you the behavior of receiving every single event. And then the target of this all rule, this catch all rule, if you will, is simply our SQSQ. So now every single event that gets published onto this event bus will be routed to this SQSQ. And then your application code, your event stream worker will kick in, parse their messages and publish them back to your Signal R client. Apart from the fact that this current implementation is going to distribute everyone's order information to every single connected client. And if you're building an e-commerce website, that's probably not going to fit the bill especially if you have a security slash GDPR slash data sensitivity use case, which most of us probably do. So we can use a feature of SignalR to actually help us get around this. And instead of sending this to all clients, we actually only want to send this to a certain subset of clients. We want to send this to a group and that group might then come from our actual event data. So let's say we have event data, dot detail and let's say our object has a property of username we can come back and add that in just a moment so now you have this ability to actually send a specific request to a specific group in this case the group is our user now signalr does have the functionality to actually send to a specific client now a specific client is a specific client connection and that could work in some use cases however in this instance, you might have multiple devices. In this instance, you might have multiple devices. Your user might be logged in from multiple devices, in which case you want to send this notification that your order has been dispatched to all of the connected devices. And looking at the actual Signal R connection code, where, where Signal R actually gets connected, you'll notice on the unconnected async here, when a new connection comes in to Signal R, that connection is going to include the username. And then we're adding that connection to a group using the name of the user that comes in. So now you have all the connection IDs related to a given user in the same group, and that group is named after the user. What this means in your event stream worker, that as long as you can get the username in your actual event data, you can then publish a message to that specific user. So coming back to the step function. Now let's actually add this functionality to be able to publish for a specific user. So in my event that's being published, the contents of my event is simply just the order number. But let's actually add a username field as part of my event body. And let's just hard code that to James for the moment. And I'm actually going to copy that. So all of the event types now are publishing the order number and with a username of Jim. So now that username is going to come as part of the event body. If I was to execute this workflow straight away now and come back to my event stream here, we you will start to see events come through that actually include the username property. So you can see I've just updated that event definition. So you see I've just updated that event definition and now I'm seeing events come down the pipe. Perfect. Back to our application code now. So we want to get a username from this detail property. And currently this detail property is simply just an object. So let's just add a new class in our shared code and let's call that user data. And that user data property is simply going to have a single property that is the username and that the actual JSON property name of that is going to be was it username? Username with a capital N. Now that you've got that username property, and, and this is where some element of governance needs to come into your events if you're building an event-driven system, because for this to work, you need to ensure that all events that get published actually include that username field. So that's something you need to kind of bring in across your entire organization. But for the purposes of this, what we can now do is say the username equals a DC realized version user data, and we want to get that user data from our event data dot detail string. This is the actual string representation of our detail. So although you're deserializing that detail string to this user data object, and that user data object actually only has the username, that's fine for the purposes of what we're doing. So now you've got the username 
and you can use that to determine who gets the event. So let's delete all of that now. And so we actually want to send that to the username group. So now all these events will only be sent to users that actually created the event in the first place. And this is why I love SignalR so much, because this is a reasonably complex use case and SignalR just has this built in out of the box. You can implement this kind of stuff really, really easily. I'm going to go off and redeploy this now using AWS Copilot. I'll come back to this video in just a moment once this service has redeployed. Okay, so now that has all redeployed and I've also added an additional property to my event stream configuration so I can actually choose the user that I'm going to connect as. So I'm going to connect as James. That's all connected successfully and I'll go off and start an execution of my workflow. And as you saw previously, that I've added an additional property to this event to actually set the username to James. As I come back to my front end, you'll see that I'm actually receiving the events for my user, a constant event stream specific to my user name. Okay, so let's now change this slightly now. I'm going to connect again, but this time I'm going to connect as Ruben because my dog is perfectly able of using a computer. And if I connect as Ruben and then run this same workflow, this is obviously publishing events for James, I won't actually receive any event data into my front end. And you can see that happening here. The order created event's been published, the payment processed event's been published, and I've received no events to my front end. So now I've actually managed to segregate this event stream by a property in my event. In this case, this is the username, but equally, this could be a chat room, a different stream of events that you want to get really specific to. And this is the power of SignalR combined with asynchronous applications. You can include some data in all of your events that get published across your entire organization and use that to filter the stream of events that goes back to your front end. And you can do that in an incredibly simple way using the features of SignalR that allow you to send messages to specific groups, specific clients, powerful, powerful stuff if you're building asynchronous applications. As always, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe, ding that bell, and I will see you all in the next video for more serverless AWS fun.